Hello everybody and welcome back to the Kami Dovi podcast. I am Christopher Veljanovsky and joining me in the virtual podcasting booth as always is the man, the myth, the legend, Toasty. Hello, hello, Toasty! Now if you've been with us for a while, welcome back. And if you are new here, thank you so much for joining us. If you are new, please hit follow or subscribe wherever you watch or listen to the podcast. And please tell a friend because it helps so much. Absolutely, Chris. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It feels great to be back. Joined with us today is a real soldier, the one and only John Parrish, the man who is Major Jackson Briggs. We're very excited today to speak with him. And so here we go. All right, John. Well, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, so to begin, uh, I'd like to ask, uh, how did you receive the role of Jax in Mortal Kombat 2? And what were you doing at this time? Uh, it wasn't so much as we received the role. It was more like uh, when Danny and they finished the first game, the cabinet, at and they brought it to Lakeshore Athletic Club because I was a trainer there. They would do a martial arts. We would exchange ideas on lifting and stuff like that. But when he brought the first cabinet, I'm a Miss Pac-Man person. One joystick and two <laughs> buttons. And, they, uh, and then they bring in this thing with all of these buttons and a joystick. And I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> so, you know, I'm playing around with it, knocking it back and forth. And I said, oh, you know, and... It was Danny and a Rich, and you know, and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be cool. Kids are gonna like this. And then I made one joke. I said, there's one problem with the game. And he said, what? I said, you ain't got no brothers in the game. <laughs> you know, so we, we don't play. <laughs> and then two weeks later, they came back with a sketch of Jax. Hold on for a second. Let me get the sketch. Ooh, oh, cool. okay. Sounds good. <laughs> And this is what it looked like. Oh, nice. Oh, look, look at that beauty. Original, original from John Tobias. Nice. That's incredible. Such yep. a talented artist. And I had asked, I said, well, man, that's dope. Who's that? He said, it be you. <laughs> I'm like, really? Okay. Uh, and do I get paid? He said, yep, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> And that's kind of how it all, how it started. You know, it was no storyboard, no auditions, no CGI, no cell phones. The only thing you had was a pager. <laughs> pager. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Wi-Fi, you know, you still have AOL and Napster out there. Oh, the memory. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there was a no, no Adobe Photoshop, none of that. So, you know, I mean, we were using VHS to film. You know, the whole second one, and we use digital finally. That's how fast it was moving in the third. So, mm -hmm. when they brought me into the third, I was the first one cast to be digi digitized into a game. But that's how it was. Danny was the, I mean, because it was him, Rich, uh, and John Tobias were all friends. They played Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. And, you know, John was working over at Midway and wanted to pitch them a fighting game. He brought it to Danny. Danny says, well, what kind of fighting game, man? man? What kind of kicks and martial arts? So, you know, and then when they saw me, you know, and we were still, we were all good friends. I mean, we didn't get to know each other and everything. And then I am, even though I lift weights, I'm 235 pounds, I'm very agile. Okay. Yeah. So I was able to show them things. You're like, I said, well, no, this is how you do a damn box, yo. You're doing two feet and I'm doing five. <laughs> you weigh 130, I weigh 200. <laughs> okay. That's how you get that up there, you know. Yeah. And then so when, they, you know, Danny was thinking about casting certain people for certain roles, you know, I mean, he thought of me immediately. And then I'm the one who thought of um, when John Tobias and I asked about two more characters for Shokan. And Sindel, and then I knew them from World's Gym, Brian Glenn, and uh, Leo uh, Yeah, and then told to come on down, you know. And so, I mean, we basically all knew each other from the commonality is Lakeshore Athletic Club. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. You know, we were all either martial artists or gym enthusiasts. Yeah. 
I've seen some sketches and some photos too where Jack's originally had like a yellow gi and like these sort of metal looking gloves. Um, <laughs> yes, tell us a bit yeah. about the time performing in that suit um, no, no, no. and how it, things eventually moved came, over. It never came to fruition. <laughs> and I told him it would never work. Okay. Uh, the way the seamstress designed it was like for everybody else. It was a stiff cotton type material. You know, kind of like uh, skinny jeans are now where it grabbed around your ankles. <laughs> okay. So it was like that. And I'm like, this is not going to work. And Danny was standing there, John, Tobias, Ed Boone. I said, let me tell you something. I'm going to jump up and do a high kick. And they're going to split. I'm going to let you know. I, I can feel it in the club. It's not going to work. And, then, and the lady was so adamant in her work that she just believed that whatever she designed was going to work. I said, it's not. Just trust me on this one. You know, I, I said, even when I took martial art, I never wore a gi because of the size of my legs. Okay. I would rip them. But sure enough, Danny said, okay, John, just humor them. Do a high kick. Okay. I said, are you sure? He said, yep. All right. As soon as I jumped up, my leg went straight up and you can hear rip. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt a nice cold breeze coming down. I think I had all of it that day. And I was like, I uh, see, I told him, and the lady just looked at I said, I need tights, something like lycra that can stretch. Yeah. I said, I am not like everybody else here. Okay, I'm one of the tallest guys here. And I said, my musculature, I am a bodybuilder. But I just happen to be very flexible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so and, and so that, that was very short lived. It was just you saw the pictures and the, you know that's what everybody sees. They say, "Yeah, we saw you in the gee." I said, "Yeah, that's the only thing that you saw me. <laughs> You'll never see any other pictures after that." Because after I did the high kick, it was over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, when Jax uh, was introduced. I would say you were easily one of the most powerful characters in the game. Um, did performing the moves prove to be a challenge for you, or did your experience with martial arts, say, uh, help you out with that? No, the moves were never a challenge. Uh, you know, uh, if you look at all of the Mortal Kombat games, 1, 2, and 3, and even the Ultimate, you will notice every character that are fighting stands is slightly different, okay? So Danny just sat there and said, I want you to do this, okay? Okay, I mean, it was just like boxing, and I mean, but then we, we had to slow down how fast we were moving because we were on analog. And yeah. the, the PC was a 586. So there was no way in hell it was gonna capture everything we're doing. Plus we were using an eight, uh, a high eight, film so so we had to go real slow and of course you'd have so issues with motion blur too wouldn't you yeah everybody's movement is slightly different based on what they perceive as what danny was relaying okay and since i used to box i used to do martial arts it was easy for me to do that but then he said slow it down i'm like okay <laughs> and then they said slower Okay. <laughs> John, so, how was it doing backflips in slow motion? That work out well for you? <laughs> no, no. Me and uh, me and Ed and had a discussion about that. Yeah. You know, I would do one, and then they say, "Okay, go slow." I said, "Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to do a rotation slow?" <laughs> Maybe if we pretend like I'm a rolling and then you can film that and then finish off the front and the back end of it might work. And that's what they actually had to do. So it was very hard to capture an attack. Just like Danny in his splits. He did that thousands of times. Okay, it's ouch. no way in hell, <laughs> you know, I mean, ouch, ouch, and more ouch. <laughs> okay, day after day. And for me, and remember, I was in combat boots. Yes. That belt, that belt that you saw on me is not the one I have today, which is very lightweight. Weighs like about, 
maybe three or four ounces. That thing was solid. Those little buckles were solid plastic. And they bound to my waist. So when I had to do a backflip with, and those were my mil- original military boots that I had on. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow. So when I'm doing a backflip, I said, okay, people, how many of these do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you get dizzy after a while, and the, the momentum gets lower and lower. I'm like, okay, we need to take about 20 minutes. Let's find some food, some more caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> it's that time. <laughs> yeah, it's that time. I was like, I, I, I can't do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> Did you provide any kind of input or influence um, to shape Jax? And was there anything at all that you wish you could have been a little bit different about him? Um, as far as the game is concerned, no. Um, you know, changing anything. Jax, Johnny Cage, Scorpion, uh, Baraka, all, even Kano, what made the game the way it is today is that is our personalities on and off. Absolutely. The stage. Okay. We're no different. So I'm from the military. Mm-hmm. So Jax was, when they found the character, Luke Cage or something like that from whatever game Danny said he found it on, that is, but we bought our own persona. We were never told to change anything. Okay, so when I say, you know, when I threw out, you know, yes, I'm the most powerful because I was the biggest on the set. Yeah, everybody else had special powers. That's why in game number three, I got metal on. Because I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Everybody else gets the special powers with me. <laughs> well, you got the boomerang and the ground. But I said, no, I need something better. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I want to be with y'all, dude. You know, you know, and, you know, so we let our own, they let us control our own persona in the game. And that's, you know, I mean, even today when I, I'm a, I'm a instructor for, Export. I'm an instructor for Fit Body Bootcamp in Naperville. I have my own personal clients. I do a lot of obstacle course races. I'm the leader of it. I said, that is my persona when I'm out there. Just what you saw. It is no different. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So the guy who did make Mortal Kombat this last movie did a good job. But he, I read the interview where he chose, he was watching all of the older films. And then I, was, I emailed him. I said, yo, why didn't you just message me, hang out for a week? Then you would have saw exactly what it's like to be Jack. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I live it every day. I just don't have it painted on. When I'm in instructing class, boot camps and everything, that is the persona. Mm-hmm. Did you happen to keep anything at all from your time working on the Jax character? Any parts of the original costume, I guess uh, you said you wore the original military boots. Uh, uh, well, I still got my boots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've never been rid of my boots. <laughs> I think I got the arm with the first ones in Mortal Kombat 2, the little silver armbands. Oh, yes. But, okay. but we since modified those into straight spikes and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, uh, the tights I would never be able to fit today, but I still wear tights when I go to conventions. And you know, matter of fact, we at Fit Body Bootcamp next week we're doing a Halloween workout of mine called the Beatdown. I will be dressed with metal arms and everything. Hey, and they will be filming it, and you know, and we're gonna have the whole fog machine, the whole thing rolling. So wow. yeah. So I stay in a very, I'm much bigger than I am not, uh, than I was then, because I still compete. I'm still athletic. Okay. Yeah, I was going to so say for your age, you look I, absolutely I, incredible. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I've ever kept was um, the little silver armband, which is somewhere in the garage, and uh, the boots. Okay. Uh, and, well, and then I got a belt remade. It looks exactly like the same one, except for it's much lighter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that thing was like eight pounds sitting on my waist. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did it feel seeing yourself digitized for the first time? And 
what was it like knowing essentially that your likeness was being played in arcade machines all around the globe? It never, I grew up in entertainment. My father was the band director for the musical group, The Whispers, you know, for over 30 years. So I've met almost every star, you know, the OJs, Michael Jackson, Phyllis Iman. So being around entertainment never bothered me. So when we got into the game, I'm like, all right. Yeah, it was just something else to do. Plus, all right, don't tell nobody I was a stripper at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so I always have been able to perform. So when we put me in the game, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. You know. And I've stood behind people in arcades playing my character. They have no idea it's me. <laughs> That's oh, going to be cool, man. right? Yep. And, and then, you know, and then somebody point, point to them and say, you know, that's junk you're playing. Yeah. And then they'd be, yeah, they'd be like, yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know, and then all of a sudden I just walk away and they say, oh, my God, that really was junk. And even to this day, I have clients. And one actually said the other day, she said, can we reintroduce ourselves? And I said, what do you mean? She said, Felicia just told me you're Jackson Moore. <laughs> <laughs> She's been in the class a year and never knew. Wow. Because yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not one to go around telling everybody who I am. I never wanted the attention. It was fun. I love the people I work with. Uh, it's a hell of an experience. We're still doing conventions. Yep. Nothing ever surprises me, you know, and I'm like, you know, it's, it is what it is. I tell people, I said, yeah, what, 33 years now? I'm like, my God. <laughs> I said, this game was older than my kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so, you know, I never, I'm not an egotistical fanatic. Okay. Only time I'm that way is when I'm about to compete in bodybuilding. And that's the first 60 seconds on stage. Mm -hmm. And then when I come back for the night show and you give me my first place trophy, I'm egotistical, take pictures, and then I am done. <laughs> <laughs> so it just, you know, it just never bothered, you know, I'm, I, you know, and because people don't understand, I say, when you see both sides of entertainment, you know, like what Britney Spears went through, with yeah. the, the, a lot of the band people went through in the seventies being taken advantage of. And, you know, I just don't want all of that. But when I go to the conventions, I love the people. They're different. They're all unique, you know. And without them, it wouldn't be us. I mean, you know, so I definitely appreciate them. Um, but, you know, that's the way I've always looked at it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, family and whatnot. What is your... What does your daughter or son think about you being the real Jax? Uh, I I understand uh, you and your daughter were playing at some sort of event. I'm not sure if it was E3, and apparently she clobbered you like what five rounds in a row or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she beat the hell out of me. Anybody who beat me in Mortal Kombat in the game. <laughs> in the game. In the game. Said, Real life is a little bit different now. I said, oh no, you that that's not going to happen. I said because. <laughs> You know, my daughter, I mean, it's like any child um, of an entertainer, you grow up into it, okay? So it was no big deal to her. She, everybody sees the memorabilia, you know, we go to conventions. Matter of fact, she came to uh, Wizard World one time, and everybody dressed in cosplay. My daughter came dressed as Jade. Oh, wow. And everybody thought, and everybody thought we were in cosplay, and so, and we were just going on lunch break. <laughs> and then when we went back to the table, then people said, "Oh!" And my wife kept telling everybody, "He's the real Jack." <laughs> He's, the, and everybody kept saying, hey, "My arms are painted, the whole nine yards," and no one believed it. And then when I was sitting by him, they'd be like, "Oh my God, you are the real!" Like, <laughs> yeah, my wife. <laughs> and my daughter standing there, and everybody was like. Is that Jade? Is that no? That's not Katana. That's <laughs> it's my daughter. But she does cosplay too. She knows she made her own outfit. You know, wow. so uh, you know, so and then my son, you know, he, he's a businessman. He's like, ah, all right. But then the grandkids, they 
we had a picture of me that says Jax. They went to school, okay, and none of the kids believed him, even though it said Harris on the back of it. <laughs> and they said, no, this isn't my grandpa. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, you know, like I tell people, people won't, they don't believe it until you actually meet me, you know. <laughs> I mean, I have a a brand new client. She says, wait a minute. My husband thinks he knows you, and he says, you're Jax. I said, well, yeah, that's what I meant by I may not be here in December because I'm flying to Long Island to sign autographs for Jax. (laughs) 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 You know, it's casual. You know, I mean, to me, I'm like, yeah, you know, I mean, we may not be able to train this day because I have to fly to Long Island. I sign autographs. We just had on the battle show council. You know, and then let's train three more sets. Let's do this. You know, and then, <laughs> and then they said, "Wait a minute!" They looked me up, and it's like, "You jacks." <laughs> I'm like, "Facts." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then some people go deeper, and they find me on Jerry Springer. Jax gets a date. That's that. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you know, and then they're like, "You had hair." I said. I, I can grow it now. It's just that I don't want to color it because it turns salt pepper. You know. <laughs> yes, I have a full hairline and uh, and and it's a bitch to maintain. No, you know, I just it's easy for me to shave it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us a bit about the process involved in having your metal arms painted for Mortal Kombat Three. I understand that the artist um, underestimated the size of your arms and ran out of paint. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm going to show you. See, normally, the paint comes in a little jar like this. This is not a lot. So when I saw that, I'm like, that's not enough. (laughs) (laughs) So he's like, oh, it like like, like the seamstress. They were so confident in what they do. And I'm like, remember, I've been in entertainment. I know how costume designs go. I know how you fit people and makeup artists. I know the whole nine. And I'm like, this is not going to work. Okay. I don't know what they told you, but I said, I'm a little bit. And back then, I was 50 pounds lighter than what I am now, but I still have full muscle. Okay. And I was right before a show. So your catch, he caught me at two weeks before a bodybuilding contest, major Okay, and I told him, I said, this is, this is not going to work. He got one arm, half of the other ran out. And back then, the paint didn't dry like it is now. Now it's instant. It would dry within five seconds. So this was like an oil base. So we had some music stands in that closet back there, and I had to hold my arms on top of them while he went uh, to get more paint. Uh. So, an hour process took six hours. Wow. Yeah. And I said, well, at least I don't have to use the bathroom. Oh, (laughs) yeah. Because I had no idea when he was coming back. I mean, they had a a microphone stand here and a music stand here. My arms were sitting there trying to dry. And it it was only, he hadn't even done the outlines yet. Oh. (laughs) So, it was just silver. But it wasn't in the back either, like in the sketch that I showed. Because the sketch, no, I don't, I don't. Yeah, hold on. This is the back of the sketch. Ah. You see how detailed ah. it had to be? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So he didn't even get to the back part yet. <laughs> we were just on the arm. Okay, and he didn't have the lines to separate, you know, the delineation between the muscle groups and everything. So I'm like, okay, all right, how long is he going to be? Did he, go somebody... to a, did he go to a hardware <laughs> store and ask for paint? And when they said, what size room are you painting? They're like, I'm painting jacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then he came back finally with like eight of his little bottles. I'm like, yeah, that's more like it. Okay, yeah. You know, even when I, because I'm going to have my arms painted next weekend, and I learned, oh, yeah, we're going to order four of those. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of black, 
Sharpies. Sharpies. Bulk buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make sure we have enough. <laughs> yeah. Because I want to do this one time. I'm not gonna be, even though it dries quick today, but back then it didn't. So, I mean, they had to put a fan on me and everything. So it was a. Yeah, we, you know, I mean, I got paid for it, but that wasn't the point. The point was, I mean, one, I had fun. We were talking. They were hand feeding me pizza while I was standing there. Hey, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> what's with Mortal Kombat and the pizza? Hey, everybody, yeah, everyone loves pizza, 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 yeah. pizza. I love it. Chicago's yeah, pizza. I mean, Chicago's nothing but pizza. Chicago pizza is so good. <laughs> so Chicago's good. nothing but pizza. You name it, we got it. Yeah. Okay. I'm not a pizza fan, but. When you're standing there for a couple of hours and you're hungry, yeah, okay, yeah, we, we, So, John, I want to clear something up here. Uh, did you, in fact, work on Mortal Kombat Four at all, or no? No one worked on Four. Four was all. That's when the uh, the CGI technology came on board. Okay, because I know Richard DeVizio, um, you know, uh, worked on there a little bit, but it, well, yeah, it's they, they did a, they, that you would... Uh, they did some mocap. Motion capture, what yeah. What happened was I was in Mortal Kombat 2, 3, and then the Ultimate. Okay, yeah. And then the 4 came after the Ultimate. And yeah. then that's when, if you look at those games, you will see how it shifted from real people into... More CGI cartoonish type. You can actually see the difference. Okay. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah. I'm under the impression that you're still good friends with Carlos Piscina, is that correct? I'm still good friends with everybody on this on the crew. Oh amazing. Because uh, I mean we, we all all of us still we live in the same area. Carlos lives about oh, maybe forty miles to the northwest, he has a nice ranch out there. A couple of beautiful kids, beautiful wife. Uh, Danny lives on the north side of Chicago. Uh, so does um, Tony Marquez, who played Kung Lao. Uh, yes. Mr. Video lives on the south side. Okay. Uh, John Tobias lives in Arizona. No, San Diego, if I'm not mistaken, last time. Okay. Then uh, Leah and... Um, she lives, I think, in either Las Vegas or she might have moved again. I don't know. Carrie lives right, you know, 15, 20 minutes from me in Batavia. So, okay. I mean, yeah, so we, yeah, we all either chat one way or another or we keep doing chores. So, yeah, we're all still good friends. We all communicate. Excellent. Does uh, Carlos ever show you anything behind the scenes uh, from uh, now that he's working at NetherRealm Studios? Do you still keep up to date with the current games at all? No, because they're not the same. Because, I mean, it's a franchise now, and it's all CGI, and, you know, Ed Boone sends me, like, when a Mortal Kombat 11 came out, and Jax has a daughter, I'm like, hey, hey, how the hell like, you know, he sent it to me, I'm like, who did I, who did I screw to get this for? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can I, can I have a Saying what she looked like or something, you know. You know, <laughs> you know I mean, you know, so we chat back and forth like that. And, you know, and then with John, you know, we chat. I mean, because he comes in town every now and then. We may have some cocktails and a dinner or something. Um, but as far as what goes on another another realm, another realm. Is, um, controlled by Warner Brothers. So a lot of stuff that Carlos is not privy to say, you know. I mean, even some, even when we did Mortal Kombat for um, Gallop and Ghost Arcades, you know, we would have everybody come down, but he had, they had to get special permission from the lawyers at Warner Brothers to be able to attend the event. Wow. Right. Okay, because it was a conflict. They thought it was a conflict of interest. To us, it's not, but... You know, the yeah, society yeah. we live in, you know, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, so Mortal Kombat's set to turn a whopping 30 years old next year. And it's not, um, a lot, not you know, not a lot of things last that long. So uh, it's amazing to see that you and the original crew are still out and about meeting with fans. Um, 
So what is it that keeps you coming back? Is it uh, the love for the fans or the friendships that you've made with the crew or both? Both. I mean, we like, I mean, as soon as they say bring us, you know, they want, uh, depends on how many of us are available. We come down, like like I said, we're doing Long Island. That's a big event, whatever it is, in December. So, I mean, when we're around each other, I mean, it is, we just have a blast. Like we, we had Nashville right after my last bodybuilding show in July. I mean, the day after. Oh, no, so no way. Basically, I went on stage, took fifth place, got in the car, ate, and then drove straight to Nashville. And we were all there. You know, long eight-hour drive, but <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was fun being around each other, having fun. And then when the fans come in, our fans are what makes us. Mm-hmm. Without the fans, it would be you know what? Okay, I mean, they kept it going for 30 years. Okay, now the thing about us is we really don't age. Because <laughs> <laughs> we all stay in the same shape or back. I told people, I said, yeah. no, I'm, I'm much better than I was at that time. I said, back then, when you looked at me, you said, oh, John was big. John was 189 pounds. John is 235 pounds now. Wow. Okay, I'm much leaner now. Much the body matures. Carrie, look at look how if you look at how how Sonya Blade is transformed. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I mean, she's a rock star. You're like, damn girl, she. Oh. Is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> you know, and, yep. and then you get Kung Lao. You know, he just posted today with his twin grandkids. I mean, he's sitting there with long hair and shit. I'm like. Dude, you look younger now than you did three months ago. <laughs> making the rock, rock yeah. and you know, Danny and Danny is walking around like William Shatner and shit. We just need to send him to space. <laughs> on, we need to send him. We need to send him on, on space SpaceX nine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it> bro. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I mean that's, you know, I mean that that's just kind of how we are. I mean, it's the fans. We and Sue's. The agent calls and says, okay, who's available to do this? We all like, hey, <laughs> we all know. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> when I drove in at Nashville, I had just picked up my food. They were all just checking in, and it was like 9 o'clock at night. John, are you going to go to the venue? John just drove 10 fucking hours. No. Wow. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. John just got off a of bodybuilding stage, ate some junk food up there that <laughs> I... I mean, it's a good restaurant and just not my cup of flavor and, you know, East Coast sure. food. And But then I'm up in the morning, shower, get all that tanning, and then I'm just cruising all down through the Appalachians and into Tennessee. And then I'm like, finally rolling here at night. And then I'm getting food and y'all coming in like, hey, I said, you flew. I drove. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that straight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I said, I've been on the road. For three days straight. Oh, <laughs> damn. And man. competed. Okay, so no. I said, no, I see y'all in the morning. I got my yeah. Jack Daniels. I got my burger. Okay, I got my fries. I'm going to the room. Wake me up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, you've made it clear before that you weren't exactly keen on the portrayal of uh, Lynn Red Williams as Jackson Annihilation. Uh, I'm aware you're actually quite fond of uh, Michael Jai White, on the other hand. Uh, tell us, uh, in terms of the new movie, what was your uh, opinion on Makad Brooks as the character? Well, it's not him as the character. I mean, he played it well, whoever wrote the script. I know actors go off of a script. Okay, uh, and he played it well in Annihilation. Face it, people, Jax is not a pussy. <laughs> I'm not sitting there crying, feeling sorry for myself, ripping off some fucking arm. Uh, it's not happening. Okay, in one, I can understand they were developing the character, but Annihilation, I'm like, really? <laughs> He's crying? No, no, 
no, no, no, no, no. Now, the last one, especially when he smashed the guy's head, I'm like, and he said, oh, this shit will work. I'm like, yeah. what are we talking? Yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah. Because at first I was saying, okay, you're still looking scrawny. Where are we going with this? Until all of a sudden he got his little... <laughs> So he got his little psych powers, and then it just like I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. I can ride with this one. Michael Jai White, I still would have chose him. Sure, he's a beast. Yeah, he was okay. great. One, he was he's great. a professional martial artist. Mm-hmm. Two, just the way his voice sounds. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. his voice. His voice just captures the character. I'm like, yeah, I don't have a deep voice like that, but I'm like, yeah. Uh, yeah, if I could, that's, perfect. That, that's the voice I would have. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, and but you know what? They, I mean, they're still developing. They got four more of these to come out, so we're gonna see. You know yeah. how they play it in. You know, but they, they did. A lot of people don't get what the. I mean, one, we were in a pandemic when they were making this film. They had to stop and then cut budget, and then you know, piece it together. So they did the best what they had. So I can understand it from a, you know, an older person's perspective. Why they did what they did. But they're developing the characters. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. people don't understand, Mortal Kombat never had a storyboard. We did not have a history. It was just a fighting game. That was it. People, you know, when you see some of the games and never, you know, the Outworld and all that, that shit was just thrown in because people wanted to see some filler or something. I mean, I mean, that wasn't what we thought. We were like, okay, we're gonna make a fighting game. Fine, let's fight. Sure. <laughs> <Okay>. So, <laughs> okay. so, and so now they're building a backstory and putting it forward. And I think yeah. what you know, under the circumstances, I said it was great. I loved it. I've watched it like five times. I even have it saved on one of my hard drives. Let me see what the next one's going to be. The next one normally tells you how the, the series is going to be. If it's going to be a good franchise or are y'all going to screw it up. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the first, I mean, this first one, I mean, come on. They had Johnny K, I mean, uh, Scorpion's Spear Throw. They had the yep. blood. They had Kung Lao's hat. They had my smash. They had her kiss. I'm like, and then Kano, I'm like, all right, that's rich. That is rich. He's so like that in real life. He killed it. I love my brother, but I'm like, boy, you are a ham for the camera. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, you know, and, and, you know, so I look at it in that fashion. I'm like, okay. And, you know, it brings us business because we're booked for at least five or six gigs next year already. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'll be in Long Beach, you know, and I, you know, so everybody says, John, you're staying lean. You're not, you're not bulking up for another content. I said, I'm Jax, and I have to stay this way now because <laughs> I have a lot of different, you can't have a fluffy Jax sitting up on stage. <laughs> a fluffy Jax. It doesn't look good. You know, belly hanging out, you know. No, that's like that old Santa Claus with kids on their lap smelling like, you know, the brewery. <laughs> <laughs> just, just doesn't look, it's not a good look. <laughs> of all the characters, I said, I have to look a very, because even Danny asked me after Nashville, how long are you going to stay looking like this? I said, damn, dog, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> I said, I, I said, until we stop doing these things, I said, you know, I'm only 10 pounds above my contest weight that I was at when I did my last contest. You know, but everybody thinks I am still the same. I said, no, I'm, you know, I, I'm not really hitting the weights. You know, this I call this my post postseason where I'm not really banging the weights. I still teach, I still lift weights, but I'm not like gridiron like I'm getting ready for a show or trying to build a lot of mass. I just hold the mass quite well. Yeah. <laughs> so this question's a bit of a tradition with our podcast, but um, if you were offered a role in the next movie as a cameo, would you accept the offer? Yep, 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 I'll be there. Call me up. 
All you have to do is give me a daily stipend, pay for my hotel and flight. I am in. And no, no fucking mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ugh. No mask. Cause, yeah. Cause we're, you know, I mean, I'm going to Dallas in two weeks for a fitness convention. No mask. And we don't wear a mask up here in our county at all. Okay. okay. Even though we're in Illinois, we do not wear a mask. In my studio or any of the clubs, you walk in with a mask, you check in, it just comes right off. So what is the hell is the point? Yeah, it's too hot to wear it. Well, actually, somebody actually named it. You know what it's called, don't you? What? You know what the, the new name for a mask is? Uh. A face diaper. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like it. Oh, I like that. That's good. Somebody said that uh, to me anyway. I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I still see people in the health club on this treadmill sweating their ass off. Uh, and it just, yuck. I'm like, uh, oh, soggy you mess. Just soggy mess. Oh, you just, oh, that's just nasty. <laughs> <laughs> and when somebody said face diaper, I'm like, yep. That's exactly what it is. Legit. (laughs) John, tell us a little bit about your experience in the U.S. military. And uh, perhaps uh, if there's anybody out there who's looking into uh, getting into the fitness, uh, maybe you can give us a few tips. Well, my military background started in 1985. I was what we call a JAFO, uh, just another fucking observer, which is a forward observer. So I wanted, when I got in the military, I wanted something to do with computers. And back in 1985, we didn't have the, the technology we have now, but they have computer type things. So I got into what we call 13 Foxtrot, which was a forward observer where I am the one who is looking out into the terrain, mapping out the situation, and when I'm working with the Air Force and field artillery, which comes in and call fire for effect, but we do it off of a computer. Back then, it was like one, two, three little pegs on a, look like an old typewriter. But, sure, you know, and then we use our RTO, our radio system. You know, that was what I did. Okay, the first Gulf War was um, interesting. It was hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And very hot, and I told people, you know, some people asked me if I ever killed anybody. I said, <laughs> well, yes, I'm quite sure I did when I called fire for effect on an entire battalion. Right. Okay, you know, do I have problems sleeping at night? No. You had two choices, them or me. Yep. I said, right. I, you know, right. and then some guys do experience PTSD, it depends on what your mindset is. I, you know, people say, why don't I experience it? I said, I probably experienced that in my entire life if you live with my father. Okay? <laughs> he gave me enough PTSD to last three or four lifetimes. Damn. Okay? Man. Damn abusive man. Smart as hell, but very abusive. So, therefore, sure. I'm like, no, this doesn't bother me, you know. But when it was over, I'm like, I'm never going back out to the sand again. Okay, that's, you just don't want to be there, you know, so, and I was always in the fitness because as a kid in California, I was born in San Francisco, so everything we did was outside almost all year round. So before there were BMX racing, like you got a sport now, we were already doing it, okay, (laughs) except we didn't have helmets, (laughs) okay, yeah. <laughs> we had little, little fancy <laughs> gloves and knee pads on, okay? <laughs> so, well, we, and then we followed every season as a child basketball, football, BMX racing, kite flying. We did it all outside all year round. So I was always active. My mother got me into martial arts when I was like seven years old with the YMCA. That was karate. I didn't like that. They made too much noise. And then a Sifu of San Francisco found me, and I learned how to do Kung Fu, Southern Style, Shaolin. I mean, I wasn't there a long time, but I understood it calmed me down because I'm a very hyperactive person. Even at my age today, I am still considered ADD. 
Okay. So I'm very hyped. I mean, I don't, I'm always, that's why if you ever look at my website, my Facebook page, my Instagram, I'm always doing something. Okay. Yeah. Whether it's a 5K, a mud run, bodybuilding, coaching people, I'm always outside doing something. If I'm not, that means I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I only get two choices. Okay. So, and if you, are trying to break into fitness, one, you, it's a lifestyle. And therefore, tenants to the whole thing. You have your sleep, you have your rest. Well, let me, excuse me, you have your sleep, which is rest. You have to eat good at least 90% of the time. Okay. Absolutely. You must do resistance with training and you must do cardiovascular training. You can watch YouTube all day with all of the bodybuilders and the fitness people, and they don't really show you doing cardio. Why? Because it's boring, especially for bodybuilders. Because we'll sit there for 35, 40 minutes just walking on the treadmill or doing elliptical. That is boring. But they show you banging off the weights, right? Mm, yeah. Uh, newsflash. The weight that they're using in the video is not what they work out with. Ah, uh, <laughs> mm. Yeah. Like it's only for content. Mm -hmm. Okay? I tell people, I say, no, I do this all the time, and I film myself, and trust me, I am not doing flies like this with 35-pound dumbbells. It's not happening. Okay? Except for Ronnie Coleman back in the 90s, yes. That's why he messed up his back. I am not squatting 800 and some odd damn pounds for, for 10, 15 reps. Okay? Yeah. You have to understand, okay, when you are doing cardio resistance, it's at least three times a week, at least 30 minutes a day. Yes. And when I say eat clean 90% of the time, that means watch what you eat and how much. And then the rest of it, like your christening, your friend's wedding, okay, I'm going out <laughs> to the boat, my boys. That's okay. Don't feel guilty about it. Because you don't do it every day. So there are four tenants. And I tell, I teach them, I said, bodybuilders like me, when we compete, we are the extreme. But the principles are exactly the same. Okay? Except for when we're getting ready. I'll tell everybody, I said, when I'm getting ready for show, I got 12 weeks. It's the extreme. Fat burners, we're on gear, we're dehydrating, we're eating the exact same way on a caloric deficit. I said, no, I wouldn't wish that on the devil. Okay, that is brutal. I mean, the body really doesn't like it, it goes against the grain, but we're trying to look a very specific way at a very specific time and yes. date. Because once that show is over, I tell everybody, oh, I get my medal? Thank you, all right, peace. Where the fuck's the restaurant? <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I said, I've been waiting. I got my shit back at the hotel. Air fryer, food, everything. We were going to the buffet ready. Deep I might be sick oh, yeah. the next day, but that's what we're going to do. And that is the truth. But the average person, I tell them, I said, this is what you do. You're going to get into the fitness industry. You have to learn not only how to lift weights and move muscles, how food affects you, how food affects different people. Yes. And then understanding genders. And then the most important part, just like with Mortal Kombat, when we sign autographs, how to look at the people and understand them. Everybody's different. Because mm -hmm. in fitness, 90% of my clientele, 95, are women. Okay? I'm a male. I don't have the same hormones, but I can not really empathize with them, but I have to understand how their mechanics work at their different stages in life. Oh, for their sure. Their hormones yeah. are entirely different. Okay. Yep. Me, us three, yeah, yeah, you know, can figure it out. You might be a little different, you might be a little different, but at the same time, we're still males. Yep. The females, that's a whole different roadmap, and if you're going to get into fitness, you must understand that, and you must understand food, how it correlates, and then understand, and just be, are you a human still? Shit's going to happen. 
Yeah. So you can't just discount like I don't believe in the mask. I've been vaccinated. I've had COVID. I get antibodies. I can talk about it like like I am sick of it. But then there are certain people sure. that are still sensitive. So I have to be. You have to be aware of all your surroundings, who, who your audience is, who you're talking to. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then if they ask you advice, guide them in the right direction, you know, not based on my opinion or my feeling, okay, but based on what the science is. Fitness is science. All your doctors out there, unless they're exercise physiologists, have not a clue about how the human body truly works. They don't. Oh, yeah. And I've trained a lot of them, okay, and they tell me, Oh, no, we only had like six weeks of, you know, nutrition. Well, hell, nutrition is 100% of what we are. Yeah. When it comes to working out, you know, even my wife, she's like, she's Filipino. They believe in all of those PhDs and doctors, names behind the letters behind the name. And I said, well, no, I don't have those letters. I have a bunch of other ones. I said, but guess who they come to the train? Yeah. Me. Uh, yep. <laughs> okay. Hey, yeah. they're coming to me. I said, and then I explained shit to them on their level, and then they're like, "Oh, you know." I said, "So, you know, I mean, if you're gonna get into fitness, learn it, learn the people, learn humans, okay." And that's what a lot of people, you know, even these young kids, they become personal trainers at X Sport and LA Fitness. They don't have a damn clue. <laughs> they come in there, they read a book, and they pass a certification exam. I'm a personal trainer. And they're dealing with a lady that's 55 years old. Have no fucking clue. Okay, yeah. I said, oh, yeah, so you didn't take the women's fitness specialist course on the four stages that women go through in life and their hormonal changes, whether it's menopause, whether it's postpartum, prepartum. Do you understand that? Oh, maybe not. And then all of the other things that happen to us as humans, are you open to look it up? You know, like I have some people with, you know, I have one doctor with here, he had a ulnar uh, corporal tunnel problem. Oh, yes. I'm like, I'm like what the hell is that? Oh. You know, and he's a doctor. And then he explained it. It is the nerve that goes through the ulna into the radius of the arm through the elbow. And it gets shifted. Yep. Well, I went home and looked it up, so the next time I saw him, we can discuss this. Okay? Ah, we seen the doctor. What's your boy going to do? How are we going to do it? How long are you going to be out? Okay. You know, but a lot of these kids and these trainers don't do that today. And if a woman has a C-section, how does that affect her abdominal region when she's trying to rebuild her core, lose fat? Do you know what insulin sensitivity is when you're talking about nutrition? Mm. How much protein does someone need? You and I, all three of us, will need different amounts of protein based on what we're doing, okay? And our hereditary, okay? Mm. All three of us are male, but it depends. I work out 20 times a week. You may work out eight times a week. You may work out three times a week. Sure. That, Okay, it matters. What do you do in your job? You guys are doing podcasts. I'm constantly like, you know, people think when I come home, this is all I do. It's like, you know, you just go and train. I said, no, I got to design a program. I am the fitness director of a fit body boot camp. I am the lead instructor over at Export. I said, I got a daughter who's coming back tomorrow. Got a grandson who's living here. I said, really? Really? Okay, I got a mother who is not computer literate, sends me her VAX card. Can you send it to so-and-so? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I run an IT business. I have a, my own IT company. Okay, so yes, I, I mean, in this room right where you see me now, there are nine machines. And they all do yeah. something different. And I just finished up one for a guy who I trained who works for Chicago Prime Meatpacking Company. Okay. Okay, and it's going to be an accountant's machine. So I, it's a whole bunch of shit. I got it. I'll tell you what I said. Is this all y'all think I do? Jackson's not just... 
beating up, snatching your arms off now. <laughs> gotcha. Oh. <laughs> yes. I wish that was all I did. <laughs> I said, no, you know, I mean, so when you get into, you know, everything is a lifestyle and you just roll with the punches, you know, yeah, and that's what I try to tell everybody, you know. I mean, when they see me watching the news sometime in the morning, they're like, oh, it's so depressing. I said, no, look at it this way. Remember in the 1950s and 60s in the movies, Andy Griffin? The man would get there and flip over the newspaper and the wife would be pouring them coffee and orange juice. The newspaper is just like me watching the news on TV. I'm just keeping up with what's going on because everything them idiots do affects how my time and money is spent. And I do not want to be blindsided like some of these people. Don't be a sheep. That's my mm. biggest thing. Don't mm. be a sheep. Yep. Think for yourself. You were born by yourself. You have your own brain. Think for yourself. God yep. gave it to you for a reason. Yep. He didn't say, let's Amen. be a sheep and fall off a goddamn cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to get philosophical. Yeah, no, 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 no. Well said, well said. Uh, so, John, uh, to finish off the episode, we're going to play one last segment. It's called... Final Round. And so what we're going to do here uh, for the final round is we're going to ask you about nine quick questions, and we're going to try to get to know you uh, a little more. And so uh, the first question being, what is your favorite food? Chinese food. Oh, nice. okay. That I like that. And Chinese stir food fry. is up there. because I cook it myself and stir fry. Quick, easy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. Best piece of advice you've ever been given, John? Oh shit! <laughs> 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 Best piece of advice is be yourself all of the time, no matter what. Oh, I live by that I every could day. Not resonate with that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anymore. No matter wow. what. Yeah, I can definitely resonate with that. Describe your strangest fan encounter. Hopefully they're not watching, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey. It was a long time ago. A galloping goes, and they came in. Now, even though they, I know it was a special needs person okay. and their family was there with them, but somebody needed a lot of Tic Tacs and Lifesavers. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It was like, and I'm trying to... Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, can we move the line? <laughs> that's, where, that's, that's where the mask comes that's, in handy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, no. Now I need a face diaper. Yeah. That's what I need a face diaper. That's right. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. <laughs> oh, man. Do you have any secret talents? A secret? No. I mean, it's not much I really can't do. So. Okay. What's something you do that a lot of people just, you know, they wouldn't expect well, from you? Well, okay. At this age I'm at now, 56 years old, I can be in the middle of a class or toward the end. I always wait for the end. And we're doing burpees. And I will just spring before I say time is up and you are done into a backflip. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Automatically. And they look at me like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> or I might do it like I did at the Arnold Classic three years ago when we were partying with the bang people and the bodybuilders and I'm just like, okay, we're setting it up and they hit a back flip and they're like, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> and that, that just happened. happened. Well, that just didn't happen. It was like I have to warm up after five Jack Daniels and you know. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, Fair, enough. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm heavier. I'm not like I was when I was 160 pounds doing this. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite movie? Reddit. Oh, okay. Nice. Chronicles of Reddit or any of the Reddit series. 
I, yeah, I heard they're in, in development of another one, I think, too, huh? I'm waiting for it. Yeah. I, they had to shut it down during the pandemic, but I'm like, oh, yeah. Come on, bring it, bring it. <laughs> <laughs> Your biggest pet peeve. Don't be late. Oh, yeah. Ah. That's a good one. Don't Very well said. Play. If we have a specific time to do X, Y, and Z, yeah. look, I give you five minutes. Anything beyond that, what didn't you prepare for? We already knew this was coming. Yeah. My wife, I love her to death. <laughs> if she died, it would be late for her funeral. <laughs> okay? I love her to death. And I said, you know, I gave up on her. But everybody else in the family, I'm like, no. If my mother, who's 75, can still be on time, everybody mm, else yep. can be on time. Yeah. You know. I mean, I still smile at you, but when you look at my face, I'm like, I'm serious. Bring your asses on time. <laughs> <laughs> I got things to do. <laughs> yeah. Yep. First job you've ever had. Park, uh, I'm picking up litter at a, it wasn't a forest preserve, it's way down south Illinois, and the first job, yeah, I was just walking around picking up paper and garbage. Okay. Yeah, that was the first job I mean, they actually paid me for. <laughs> How old were you at that time? Oh, yeah, I was about 17, no, 16. Okay. 16. What is your guilty pleasure? Okay, we're going to have to define pleasure. (laughs) 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 You have to define that. Is it food or something else? I mean... You pick, man. (laughs) Whichever. Oh, hell no. Oh, that is wrong. (laughs) That is wrong. Go for it. Go for it. (laughs) No, I can't say it on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Understandable. If my wife saw this, she'd be like, "You weren't supposed to say that." Uh, (laughs) Not food. Put it that way. There's a clue. There's a clue. (laughs) But I do eat. (laughs) Don't let your mind go where that one is. And the women know. I'll say, "Oh, my guilty pleasure." Yes. Give me some nice, beautiful thighs, and my face will be right there. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, brilliant. Okay, well, last question, John. If you really had to think about it, what would you say is probably the funniest thing that has ever happened to you? Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's, well, that's a lot of angles. I have to go back into the halls of, uh, whoa, I I don't know. Because life's not over yet. Fair enough. Life yeah. is not over, so I have. I mean, there are a lot of funny things that happen to me, but I'm like, no, it's quite not over yet. So I'm quite yeah. sure there's going to be something else on the horizon that will top that, <laughs> whatever that may be. Yeah. Uh, only thing I can remember is that uh, they put a fire alarm at a health club, and I was an idiot and ran out butt naked. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> say what? <laughs> because I forgot my towel. Ah. Uh. Yes. Because I was in the shower and I heard it. And I'm like, and everybody said, we got to get out now. And I didn't think about it. And I'm running out, soap still in my face, eyes dripping down, button up, uh. didn't grab the towel, <laughs> and right out on the main floor of the health club. Wow. Wow. <laughs> hey, well, you, you were a stripper before, you said, so I don't, that don't mean much. <laughs> no, but not, not totally new. <laughs> <laughs> Now the soap starts coming down my face. <laughs> a little bit different. You know, I know, I just play it, man. Wasn't oh. fully shaved yet. Didn't have to look, you know. But I was like, oh, wow, false alarm. That is, because it was a false alarm. Oh, man. Yeah, that was not a good day for me. I'm like. No, that is know. quite the day. Yeah, I told myself, I hate all y'all. I hate, I hate you all. 
And ever since then, so if you pull a fire alarm now, I ain't running nowhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I ain't going to. They did it at the hotel in Pittsburgh in July, and they didn't send nobody no notice. I was I was in the shower, too. I'm like, that motherfucker burned. <laughs> <laughs> I am not running out here. And then when I finally did get out, because it kept going off, I'm like, okay, I'm dry it off. Get my phone, got my keys. And get to the end of the hallway. The guy said, nah, it was just a false alarm. I said, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah take my head back. Okay. Yeah, I said, I've been through this once before, and that first time was not. Oh. No, no, when. Everybody and some people who remember me still remember that scene. So no. They yeah, said, sure. So that was you. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Just don't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. It's been an absolute pleasure having you with us. Um, and yeah, we can't wait to um, see what's next for Jax. Absolutely. Well, like I said, you're gonna see. Just follow my. Um, Follow the, the website, and uh, actually not the website, uh, Facebook and Instagram, because next week when we do the Halloween party, you'll see it. Actually, yeah. just follow me, period. On um, if you're on Instagram, it's beyond human dot fitness dot dot com. If it's on Facebook, you just follow uh, beyond human fitness dot com. You're gonna see I do something almost every weekend. So Jax never stops. You know, <laughs> never stops. Love it. Okay, people, and that's a close for episode 11. I can speak for myself and Christopher when I say it's always an honor to speak to one of our childhood heroes. We're excited to have you join us again in the coming weeks. Uh, so I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Have fun, stay safe, and stay flawless.